What's up everyone? My name is Jeff and today we are going to have some fun playing Magic as we do. And uh, today we're playing a green Stompy deck and uh, I I was I ran into this a couple of times in uh, Best of One and realized that it's really powerful against Mono Red. It's just a really powerful aggressive deck. I built my own version of this which is a little bit different than probably what I played against. Uh, but I just wanted to pull out like all of the best things from Mono Green. Uh, and just see how it does. The one issue I am seeing right now with this deck is that I, I'm, I'm lacking a little bit of interaction. Uh, we have Voracious Hydra, which can come down and fight target creatures. So we have that interaction, which is really, really powerful. It's good against Mono Red. We have Thrashing Bronzedon, which can also destroy Ember Cleaves, things like that. Vivian, which can also kill stuff. But that's basically it for interaction. Uh, and so we, we do have a little bit, we are lacking a little bit in that front. And so I could probably go into some other things, but I like the deck that I built. So I wanted to go ahead and try this one out, but I just wanted to say that up front that you may want to add in things like thrash, uh, which is, and this is part of the issue with mono green is mono green doesn't have a lot of, of interaction, but thrash is an instant speed, uh, version of rabid bite, which just a uh, target creature deals damage e equal to its power to target, target creature or planeswalker. You, you don't control. And even though you don't get the threat side of this with red, you could even splash for it if you wanted to but adding two or three copies of this adds that little bit of extra interaction in the deck that you may want uh but overall this deck is pretty solid i think that it's going to do really well so let's go ahead and get into the gameplay see how it does for us and wish me luck before we jump into the gameplay a quick thanks to fusion gaming for sponsoring this video be sure to head over to fusiongamingonline.com for all your magic the gathering needs check the link in the description below all right here we are with a terrible opening hand so we got a mulligan that all tap stuff, and I'm so excited for these new beautiful lands. The only one I don't have right now is the island, uh, but this is a sweet hand. Um, keep this. I think we drop a Pell Collector because we are a kind of expensive deck. We're hoping to run into some other stuff. Having double Pell Collector is sweet, but we have a good curve right now, and I want to keep that curve alive. So let's go ahead and drop one of those down and see what F Warlock is doing here. Pell Collector go past the turn. So what are you guys' thoughts between a mono green versus like a gruel aggro deck? Uh, looks like we're up against a mirror match here either way. So growth streamer guardian go, swing him on in. Down to 18 past the turn. All right, so we're, we're gonna see right now. I just barely asked if gruel aggro uh, is gonna be, oh dude, I forgot that I have these sweet up uh, world championship stuff. All right, well, we get to keep, ooh. I can kill this and put it on one. That's not really worthwhile, I don't think. So let's go ahead and just put down um, Crashing Brachadon, grow the Pell Collector, pass the turn. And this music for me is seeming loud. I think it's because it's on here loud. There we go. All right, um. Let's let's kill the Pelt Collector now. Actually, we may just swing in. And make we could just make this massive. We should make it a 4-4. Four, four. Or 4-5, four, which blocks the Bone Crusher Giant. Throw the Pelt Collector, but then do we swing in is the question. Waiting one turn makes this guy even bigger, which gets out of the range of a lot of mono red or like red green stuff. Um, I think I'm actually going to go ahead and offer trades here. This grows the Pell Collector when this dies, so it is annoying in that fact. Down to 12, we're still staying aggressive. I can put, make this a four or five, which blocks basically everything. Except for questing beast, which I mean, we could block and just trade off, but then Pell Collector grows. Um, let's, let's go for it. I'm really just banking on that. I'm going to draw something good here. So I could have killed the Pell Collector first and then swung in, uh, which I'm debating now if it may, might have been a bit better. 
Um, again, though, we got their life total down, and that's what we're trying to do with this deck. We are kind of aggressive. We are stompy. We're trying to go over the top of them. And uh, this does kind of allow that to happen. Donry's Ambush. That's the biggest uh, bonus, I feel like, that Gruul has over our deck. One of the best. I, I, dude, I don't know what happened, but I can't get rid of my task bar right now, and it's really annoying me. All right, swing in with everything. I'm guessing he trades off with like questing. He takes it all. Sweet. Um, we'll hold on to that. Pass the turn. We don't have very much like direct damage or anything though. If they have Ember Cleave, they love Shuck Beast, plays a 5 5 down. Yep, that's fine. Yep, Pell Collector's massive. Shifting Ceratops. Hmm. All right, this is a little bit interesting. I'm not sure how much I should be pressuring because if we swing in with Shifting Ceratops, Questing Beast, then both of these will kill these guys. Uh, Shifting Ceratops can... Um, I can give it haste right now. I wish I could cancel from this now, actually. Because I'm not sure Reach would actually do anything. But they could have Skark and Hellkite. Let's go for haste. So this is the way I'm thinking I'll swing in. If they try to double block, we're left with... They have a 1 when we have a 4 to 5. And their life total is at 4. That's not a bad position to be in. If we let them just kind of keep uh, keeping the game slow, we, like I said before, we don't have a ton of interaction. Uh, we could draw into things like Nyssa and just kind of take over the game that way. Um, but it might be okay for us to just be trying to trade here. So let's go ahead and swing in. I'm assuming they kind of, I mean, they can, yeah, chump here if they want. They have to block the quest piece with something big, though. Now we have two creatures uh, that can swing through. And, I mean, they do have three cards in hand, though, and we're empty-handed. So we're kind of hoping that we can just... They don't have anything really good. This was a pretty risky line. But opponent scoops it up. Didn't have anything. The risk paid off, and booyah! Sweet! All right, we are up against Lawful. Which sounds like awful. <laughs> um, this hand is interesting. We have a lot of three drops and not three lands, but we're on the draw, so we should be able to hit into those things. We have the way to kind of stay in the game against Mono Red, which is a test and champion or petitioner to just keep gaining life. Um, and we have really good curve if we do hit lands. So I'm going to keep this. It's. It could should be really good. <laughs> we'll see. I'm really worried we're not gonna hit our lance, and we are against mono red. So I mean, this this hand is supposed to be good against mono red. We'll see exactly how good it does. Castle gear and break can also be awesome here. All right, fervent champion. Let's see if they have the light up the stage here. That or steamkin. Plays out Rimrock Knight. Cool. Um, hmm. Tishner, Pell Collector is interesting. I, it could just run it out just to block, like Rimrock Knight or something like that. Go Chamber Guardian can block the Fervent Champion, but this is the one that's actually going to be doing damage to us. Uh, let's get out Pell Collector here. Fast turn. Let's see if they actually attack him with Rimrock Knight. They could have Infuriates here, which will be infuriating. Let's see what I did there. <laughs> I, I I never know how how greedy I want to get with like a Satessa Petitioner. All right, so they do shock it, stomp it. Uh, which again, I'm kind of glad that it was Pelt Collector instead of Grouching Guardian. But lots of damage coming through. Lots and lots of damage. Seven down to eleven. Um. Oh my gosh. Dude, I don't know what happened with this taskbar. Finally, it's full screen. There we go. All right. Uh, thrashing Bromtodon. 
Now we have a really good blocker. But the opponent's going to start doing crazy things. Um, what we need next turn is just lands. I think if we can get out Questing Beast, uh, hold up a little bit more defense, and then um, play out Petitioners after that. There's Annex, which can block our Questing Beast. Yeah, pumps there. All right, so, man, taking a ton of damage. Down to seven. Thrashing Brontodon does mean that we have an answer for... Um, um, Ember Cleave, but that means that we can't play out other stuff. So gain for life here, have a 2-2 blocker is pretty good, but that doesn't beat Ember Cleave. Um, we may just throw out, throw out like a Paradise Druid right now. It's a good blocker, and we can still kill Ember Cleave. Let's let's actually go. To, man, Growth Chamber Guardian means we can block this guy, but I think we're we're wanting to trade off with the Rimrock Knight no matter what. So, Paradise Druid, pass the turn, hold up mana for Thrashing Bromptodon, which we can block Annex when it gets triggered onto it, um, and then kill Embercleave. If they put it onto the Seder, then I think we're just fine. We're gonna let it all resolve. It means that everything will trade off and they're stuck with a bunch of satyrs, but we can hopefully gain enough life. I don't know. That's going to be rough. Is the last card in hand Ember Cleave? They have Castle Embreath, which is also not great for us. Bone Crusher Giant, K. Okay. They may play this slow game here and just let Annex be massive. I mean, just creating lots of satyrs here with Castle Embereth is not a bad way to go. They ought to be just swinging in with everything, in my opinion. Uh, we have to block and trade. All right. Ooh, here's the land. We'll gain some life, but we don't have very good blockers. Up to 10. Pass the turn, and they get Castle Embereth with a really wide board, and I think that we're just dead here. We can block here and here, where they go to 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And either way we block is game, so good game. Oh, man. We really did not hit our land drops. So like I said, we had a great curve if we curved out to four lands. Um, and opponent just went crazy powerful there. They were on the play. We didn't have anything until turn two. And that that one was just kind of, it got away from us. All right, we're up against Handa Panda. We're on the play, and I say this all the time, three drops on the play are much better than three drops not on the play, but man, that's a lot of three drops. But your vote can get massive, and Thrashing Bronthodon is very interactive against a lot of decks. So, keep... I'm hoping that we draw into a 2-drop along the way. Um, that's the dream, is that we're just going to hit a 2-drop off the top. Life is going to be amazing. Al said, the Life's Bounty. Well, no 2-drop, but we got some stuff on the top end. That's also not terrible. Yorvo's going to be big. Bigger than Pride Mate, I dare say. Yeah, I dare to say it. All right, play Yorvo, pass the turn. We can do some cool things with Thrashing Brontodon, like, uh, because these are enchantments, I can, like, block a massive Ajani's Pride and make, kill the guy that gives him lifelink. You know, so there, there's going to be things that keep us in this game longer than you typically would, uh, would be. Um, Heliod is the biggest issue. We just don't have really any answer for Heliot because it's indestructible and everything green does is fight and indestructible type stuff. The creatures of power three or greater. So we can bring out Growth Chamber Guardian um, to just kind of be a blocker here. That's going to be, that's kind of interesting. All right. So I think we're looking for land just to try to get up to Nyssa. Um, Thrashing Bronzedon. We can't block the beloved princess, which is annoying. Um, yeah, let's throw out Growth Chamber Guardian. Stop their game plan. Hopefully they don't have anything else here. I could just swing in with Yorvo. They block three times, make a massive guy. 
swing back. Can we just keep up with that, though? Like, they may just be willing to trade these guys off for one. So let's, so, let's say no attacks for now. We do need to start swinging in at some point, though. But we know that, especially if we get Nissa next turn, then we can just, we should be able to just slow the game down uh, and block him. And this is one of the first games I'm not sure if I ever really care to grow this Growth Chamber Guardian. <laughs> we're, we're just going to keep him as a, just a little guy. Just a little crap health warrior. Oh no! Oh, that's so bad. All right, so they're going to attack in only with two. The Johnny's probably, I think, gets up to five this way. Do they have another way to pump? Because if not, we're fine killing a Johnny's Pride Mate here. Get it while we can. Please don't have another way to gain life. Oh, they have protection. Right, right, right. Oops. Oh, man. Major misplay there. All right, we kill the beloved princess. The Johnny's Pride Mate gets massive. We get Nissa. We will play out Nissa. We will not fail. Harness the elements. Um, swing in. If they want to trade off with Linden, I think we're okay with this. They could have another Linden, and that would be a good reason for the trade off. Even still, though, we can keep Nissa alive just by chump blocking a Johnny's Pride Mate, which we were planning on doing anyway at this point. Uh, Nissa gives us the shot of just creating indestructible creatures. Like, that is the only thing that really keeps us alive in this game. Uh, and so, having lots of mana next turn to play two of these guys out, to have enough blockers. Uh, Outside of Life Bounty, giving them uh, protection from green is annoying. The cool thing, though, that they may forget is that this forest is not actually green. It is a colorless land, and so they cannot protect it against the forest. Can't be protected against the forest, dude. Nature always wins. All right, Handa Panda. What you got? Another pride, mate. Let's see how they swing in. All right, swings at Nissa. Yep, yep, yep. Tax gains life, throws the pride mates. It's annoying. As long as we can get to an indestructible land, we're okay. All right, chump lock. Blocking with the horse here maybe may have been better. Meh. All right, more lands is actually pretty nice here. Thrashing Bronze it on. With some mana left up. Thrashing Bronze it on again. Thrashing Bronze it on. All right, we have some blockers. Untap a forest. Do I want to swing in with the forest? We could kill the life's bounty now, but that doesn't mean that they won't have another one. Uh, again, these forests are blockers here. I think that we just hold off, try to keep as many forests alive, pass the turn, and once they get to where they're indestructible, and we have just some indestructible blockers um, that aren't any color, so Alcida life bounty doesn't do anything, we should be able to finish this off. The issue is if they get Heliod and, like, Healer's Hawk. <clears throat> because we don't really have Flyers. We have some Reach. Um, I think Vivian actually does just kill Flyers. Johnny is annoying. More Johnny's Pride Meets also annoying. I seek a path to peace. <clears throat> Being able to hit all of our um, forests as well is really great in mono green because we get literally 
all of our decks. So we should be able to, like, we only have three lands that aren't forests with Castle Garenbrig. And so we're going to be hitting big good stuff. All right, they're probably going to swing in with both Pride Mates. This gets up to a 5-5. Five five. We can double block it pretty effectively. Um, Alcy of Life's Bounty is annoying, though. All right, swings in. Uh, I think we're blocking with stuff that isn't lands still. All right, they gain one life. Um, what we're going to do here, we're going to at least try to kill something. All right, go to combat. Combat. Oh, yeah, blocks. Block with Thrashing Brontodon. And now we will sack this one, kill that guy. Blocks are already done. They don't have trample. We get to kill somebody. So this is the cool thing about Thrashing Brontodon. There are a lot of times it, it is just an interactive card, which is cool. All right, pass the turn. I'd love to have a Mana Sink. Would you look you there? Another indestructible person. All right, play Nylea. Use Nylea's ability. Another Nissa. Yeah, actually. Yeah, we keep that on top. We take up. Untap a forest. Be wary of the ground you walk on. Dude, I really wish this had reach. I really have no clue why it doesn't. Um, past the turn. We could kill a Johnny's Strength of the Pride here. Past the turn. <clears throat> We keep Nissa on top because this allows us to ultimate with this Nissa, um, grab all of the forest, which they come in tapped, they do. But this lets us play the other Nissa out right away. We have a bunch of indestructible things. Um, it is annoying though that we won't have, we'll have to tap down quite a bit to play it. Tomic is annoying. They have a flyer. But we get to ultimate with Nissa here, and that's what matters. We have four attackers. Okay. Yep, gain some life. We have a blocker all day long for this kind of stuff. This is going to be a long game, but I, I think that we're favored at the moment. And I kind of just want to block with a lot more stuff. We could block with double thrashing Brontodons. They can kill both of them, though. Yeah, I mean, the whole point is that we're going to have indestructible stuff. And with this other Nissa, we're going to eventually just have everything kind of out. So, uh, pass to my turn. Ultimate with Nissa. When the land speaks, I shall listen. All right, go down to the next page of stuff. Grab all of the forests. There we go, 14 lands coming out here. This means that only three draws aren't interaction, or aren't good things in our deck now. Um, this part is annoying. We're, we're tapping a lot of things down, uh, but we know that we have blockers. I want to just use Nylea. No, okay, we're gonna do this. I will protect the virtue of this world. Um. Why in the world can I not choose a land? Can't be targets. Oh my gosh, Tomic just shuts down Nissa. Oh my goodness, I did not know about that. The land shall come. Tomic can't be the target. Our lands can't be the target of abilities. No attacks. Oh goodness, that is so bad for us. All right, we have to kill Tomic. Tomic is just shuts down Nissa. Why has this not been played more? 
That is so powerful. Lands on the battlefield lands land cards in the graveyards can't be the target for the spells or abilities your opponents control. I thought that was only powerful against their side. I, I don't think I've even known about that. What? Okay, that's so good. All right. Um, uh, Johnny does go off next turn, which is also very bad. Exiling all of our stuff. Dude, all right. We're, I think we're in trouble. Uh, we lose here. Um... I was thinking that we would be able to at least create enough guys to like swing in against the Ajani's Pride mate, or Strength of the Pride. Um, but not so. They're going to gain tons of life here, but tap down everything. Which means we can attack Ajani. Can we kill it though? All right, they can make some massive dudes. We need to keep enough stuff alive that we can attack an Ajani. They also have a blocker. All right, yeah, resolve all. All right, there are big boys in the house. We get to kill Linden, which is sweet. All right, block here, block here, indestructible. Should be indestructible. All right. Um, 13 here, and we just have to jump block something, take the 11, and a bit more. Well, this means we get to kill a Johnny, Strength of the Pride, which is huge here. Uh, and then we just have to try to survive against Tomic, which if we find guys to, uh, yeah, th there's some things we can find to make this work. Ilya helps us dig for creatures all day long, as long as Nissa stays alive. We have answers here. We can dig into them. Go to my turn. Okay. Um... First off, kill a Johnny, swing in. Oh, dang it. No, I messed up. No, Jeff, you knew about the token. Oh, come on, Jeff. Can we find a reach creature? It doesn't matter, actually, because questing... Oh, man, that's what we needed. Dang it! Oh, I messed it up. Questing Beast would have been beautiful. Why didn't I just do that first? We had so much mana, and I knew that we had Questing Beast. I knew that I had stuff to answer things. I was just thinking, okay, okay let's just get rid of that. Man, that was dumb. Uh, the reason I'm scooping there is because Johnny's uh, trigger is a zero trigger, I believe. And it wipes our entire board, which we just don't have answers for. And then they, they just swing in. I totally messed up there. Uh, I think that we had a shot of coming back because all we had to do is dig with a ton of mana that we had. Dig for an answer to kill, um, you know, a, a shifting Ceratops would do it. Uh, we had the other, we had Vivian in the deck. Um, those are the main things that would actually do it. Uh, but we, we had answers for Tomic. Once we had answers for Tomic, we had enough blockers to block everything all day long. We should have been able to finish that game out. I just messed it up. Oh, man. All right, up against Fail Burger, which the fail is just like stinging really hard right now after that, that last fail. This is a sweet hand, though. Uh, we have Paradise Druid, which is sweet. It's just so sweet. We have uh, Vivian for the next turn into a lot of life gain if we want it. Uh, Thrashing Bronstodon being able to uh, hit something as well is not bad. Tomic. All right, well, we found out that Tomic is annoying as all get out. And so um, we need to bring out a creature to be able to kill Tomic, which um, Vivian actually turns on our 
Nylea. So let's go ahead and play Nylea out. Pass the turn. This makes everything cheaper as well. Tomic really good against our deck, we found out. Uh, and maybe we have a chance to uh, to redeem ourselves against Mono White here. Let's see what they have. Heliod. Yep, yeah, Heliod comes out. But so too does Vivian. The Vibs. I love everything from deer to dinosaurs. All right, target creature. You kill him. Watch out. They bite. They don't have any haste, right? Do they have a way to get get 5 pips? Just in case they do. Let's hold up Paradise Jewel. It's a three turn clock if we had it out, but we also have questing beasts. We have some other things. I just want to keep Vivian alive because this also pumps everything. So we still have a, a two turn clock actually by just ticking up. Linden comes out. So they're close to the pips for Heliod. All right, so they have Heliod out. We, I'm glad we kept the blocker now. Swings in. Yeah, gains life, puts counters on things. We will block because Vivian is important. Nylea goes away, comes back in just a second. Um, let's go. Let's play two things out here. Thrashing Brontodon. Petitioner. Um... Counter here, counter. They get vigilance as well. They just gain trample until end of turn. So if they keep putting counters onto Lin, and it's going to be annoying. Um, let's actually put this onto Nylea. Um, that way, if they put a couple counters my onto my. Linden, How we can still kill grow. it. So they don't really have an answer here. Um, they can give stuff protection from green and swing in. Which we may end up sacrificing this just to get rid of that ability. We do also have some stuff in the sideboard. So I have um, a Shifting Ceratops, Voracious Hydra, um, a, I think the fourth Yorvo. Um, just all the cards and I think I think in another uh, Thrashing Brontodon. All the cards I had three of that are just nice to have. All right, they have removal. Not enough to put Nylea away though, so that's nice. Plays out giant killer. That's going to be really bad for us, though. Being able to tap our stuff down is not good for us at all. Dude, Mono White, I feel like, is pretty solid right now. I think finding... I did not know that Tomek shuts down uh, Nissa. All right. Let's let let's Linden get through. Swings in with everything. Just her. Why not swing in with Heliod? Yep, kills Vivian. That's important for them to do. Makes sense. All right, any of these things lets Nylea come back, but they have an indestructible blocker. They have a way to tap down our indestructible blockers. Man. This is just annoying. Let's play out Questing Beast. It's a blocker for Linden no matter what. No attacks past the turn. It's kind of interesting that we've been running up against a lot of mono white because honestly our deck is strong against almost every deck except just like this deck that's going wide, goes big, slows the game down, gains a ton of life. And we saw in the last game I probably was going to win if I just didn't mess it up. But that's because they didn't have Heliod out. They didn't have the pieces that, or they didn't have like a giant killer that can just tap us down. Um, so we'll see what they do here. The best play... Actually, they don't have enough to tap down. Um, now we have Voracious Hydra. 
which can kill Giant Killer, which I think is what we've got to do. Oh, things are cheaper because of Nylea. That's right. Okay, so one, two, three. Man, making just a big guy wouldn't be bad either, but we got to kill this giant killer because it, it does shut us down. The pride mate is annoying as well, but this is worse. So if we swing him with both creatures, we can swing both at a Johnny. He get, just gets to create another pride mate. He jump blocks there. So we don't actually have a good answer at the moment. No, no attacks. As long as we can kill Linden, we're in okay shape. Daxos is annoying, so more ways to gain life. They create another guy, gain some life. Start putting counters on things. Yep. They also just gain a ton of life with the Johnny every turn. Um, honestly, maybe we just need to be splashing into blue or something like that for interaction. Blue or white or red. Because green just does not have the interaction that we need. Stand by your side. We only have the one Vivian, so that that is gone now. Being able to do it, use it with questing beasts is sweet because you can just kill anything. All right, um, shifting ceratops, Tessin petitioner. Gain a ton of life. Up to 37. Everything kills questing beast here. But questing beast kills everything too, so I'd rather be able to be on the blockers with be on the block with that. Um if we swing in, Heliod just blocks there. So yeah, no attacks. What we need is we need to wait until we have like a massive voracious hydra. That is something that we can do. If we find a Nissa, just really ramp up like crazy. Hope they don't get 35 life before long, which is like next turn. <laughs> yeah. In fact, if they use it here, swing in with enough. The soul. They can swing in with Heliod just to gain life. I'm glad that they sped up that inner, that uh, stuff there. All right, Questing Beast can attack in now. They, they have blockers for everything. All right, use this. Play out Growth Chamber Guardian. Pass the turn. We're still in so much trouble. Even just creating this castle Ardenvel every time kills us. <laughs> you know, it's like they can just make those into two twos with Heliod. Um, yeah. I'm sticking around because there may be a way that we can get out of this. I, I think that we, not with a Johnny out on the battlefield. If it wasn't on the battlefield, we could wait a few turns, try to make it work. But we know that next turn, all of our stuff gets wiped. Are they attacking now to see if they can gain enough life? When stuff dies, they also... How much life is it? It's 15 more. So they're trying to go for like 30 life, I think, here. We can just block with Nylea. But we have another questing beast so we can block there. Stuff dies, they gain more life. It's annoying. Oh, gives it lifelink too. Oh, now they just exile everything. That's fair. Yeah, you can see. Oh, goodness. All right, up against Akinu, and uh, I like this hand. Um, we don't actually have a three drop or anything to really play. Voracious Hydra doesn't come out to three at the latest, and then it's really not good. Um, but I, we have the lands to get to some really good things, so let's go ahead and keep this. I'm hoping we have a lot of 
uh, two and three drops in the deck. And so, like, that's the majority of our deck. So we should run into it, theoretically. And if not, we have the lands to get to other things. All right, um, Fel Collector, swing in. Pass the turn, up against control. I'd like to hit like a, a thrashing Brompton on here. Cause that's something that we're fine losing. More lands, of course. We really just don't have anything. What the crap, all right. Down to 17, pass the turn. Shifting Ceratops is great, but that's the answer that we want to have for before Shatters of Sky. So are they playing Quench is the question here. Yorvo's good. Let's try for Questing Beast. I'm just, if it gets countered, it's annoying. Shifting Ceratops would have been better then. Home of the Sea, all right, sweet. Um, digging for Shatters of Skies, I'm guessing. Uh, but we get in for a huge, huge hit here. And then we have Shifting Ceratops after Shatters of Skies. Down to nine, past the turn. Voracious Hydra can also just come out as a massive creature. Vanishing Light hits Questing Beast. Okay, leaving a lot of stuff. If we hit land, we win. All right, land. No! Oh, come on. Give me the land. Um, now what do we do? Let's play out Yorvo, just to grow the Pelt Collectors. Swing in. Down to three, past the turn. Do you have Shatters of Skies? They have a blocker now. That's fine. And opponent scoops it up, there we go. And that was part of the reason that we built this deck is to play up against the control decks with an aggressive deck that has shifting ceratops in it that is just powerful. All right, up against simple deck here and love this hand. This is sweet. It looks like we're up against mono red though, so we'll see. <laughs> you can't really base everything just off the cards there. Man, I don't. I always forget to change my card sleeves. I build so many decks that I just forget about that piece of it sometimes. Um, like I don't just have like decks that like this is the deck that I play. Um, I build like two new decks every day, so <laughs> or every day that I play. I've not been playing as much lately. All right, so we have Forest into Paradise Druid. Um, I can't remember. Are we on the play? I think so. Which will be good. So Forest pass the turn. Paradise Druid. Um, all right, I'm guessing this deck. Let's see what we're up against. Uh, this is this could be Jeskai Fires still. Um, is it? Um, okay, I'm guessing Jeskai Fires now. Yorvo is sweet here. Do they run Justice Strike? They play Yorvo. Do they have Quench? Um, I think I want to keep uh, Paradise Druid protected here. And not swing in. Let's see, they did they did leave it up. You know what, now, now we can swing in. We we're trying to get in as much damage as possible. Down to 16, past the turn. Um, the nice thing is, like, if it does stay alive, we get a hasty shifting Ceratops next turn, and so we get a swing in for a bunch of damage. What is it? Six. This becomes this, it's two counters. We get a swing in for a lot. And then do it again the next turn. We hit land. Anyway, so we're hoping that Paradise Druid survives here. Keep something on top. Could be board wipe. But we have an answer for board wipe as long as we draw into enough of land here. They do have the bone pressure train. Alright, that is annoying. But meh. Okay, um. We know we have the hasty shirt the cer ceratops after this point, so let's go thrashing Brontodon. They do get blocked by a bone crusher giant though. Swing in with Yorvo. Down to 11 past the turn.
All right, do you have board wipe? It's a fairy. Fairy is annoying. Bounce the Yorbo. I'll show restraint. Okay. This is just guy fires. And we have exactly what we need to be doing well against them, so it's fine. Um, shifting Ceratops. Give it haste. Swing here, swing here, swing low, sweet chariot. All right, so if they don't have board wipe, we win next turn. If they do have board wipe, they go to one. And then we hope that we can finish it off. It may be better just to throw out like a Yorbo or something. Hmm. Man, just get fires. It's, it's amazing how fast they can do cool stuff here. Like, if they just have Fires of Invention into Kenrith, into whatever, we're in trouble. But if they had Fires of Invention, they would have played it last turn. I mean, they've drawn two cards now. Okay, another Teferi. Can't hit Shifting Ceratops. We have another Shifting Ceratops. They didn't leave up. They left up removal mana, I guess. But I know that they don't really have a lot of instances to beat stuff. And so, Shifting Ceratops number two. That's game. Pretty sure this is game. Yes! Woo! There we go. Can we beat the two decks that were number one and number two uh, <laughs> in the worlds just barely with this deck? And that's what I was hoping for. Uh, unfortunately, though, this deck apparently loses to Mono White, uh, which, I mean, we have chances to win. You just have to not screw them up. <laughs> but Mono White, uh, Johnny uh, Pride Mate, or Johnny Strength of the Pride is really bad for us. Uh, but overall, I love this deck. I think that Mono Green is a good way to go right now. Um, there's a lot of powerful things that you can be doing with it. Um, I, I think that you can fine tune this to make it work just right for against Mono Red. Like I'm not sure Growth Chamber Gar uh, Guardian is, is needs to be in here. It's not amazing. I just you you want to have a good you know a good chunk of one and two drops. Voracious Hydra isn't though. Um, I, I I was debating on bringing in um, uh, what is it? Love Struck Beast, and I just didn't, it didn't quite feel right in the deck. Um, but but I do think it, it could be powerful. The issue is, is like Pelt Collector is the only other 1-1, one, one, and it just never, like, so if the if the 1-1s one, die, it's just a blocker, and we're trying to be more aggressive. Uh, and so Love Struck Beast can be aggressive if everything goes right, but it's no guarantee that was actually gonna happen. So anyway. Uh, love to hear down in the comments below the things you guys would switch in with this, what uh, what cards you would add to it. But uh, yeah, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it. Please like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks so much, and bye-bye.